Acrylic can be a trap and most people don't even know what they walked into. Both of these sheets are labeled quarter inch acrylic, but by the end of this, I'm gonna show you why one is worth a little more and why the other one might just cost you a jig as we make acrylic make sense. There are two types of acrylic, cast and extruded. Extruded plastic is made by forcing molten acrylic through a machine that presses it into continuous sheets. Fast, efficient, and cheap to produce. Something hardware stores love. It can be sliced and shipped quickly, and for things like picture frames or windows, it works fine. It just sits there. But back in the shop, you're drilling, mounting, clamping. That adds stress. And this stuff already has a whole bunch of stress that's baked in. Here's my sheet of extruded acrylic. It looks like acrylic. There's really nothing that stands out. If you compare it to cast, it's hard to make out any difference, which is why it's sometimes so difficult to find the right material in the store. But inside, at a molecular level, molecules have been stretched and deformed as the acrylic was pressed. The plastic wasn't cooled evenly, it's just a mess. But let's quickly go through the extrusion process so you get a better understanding of what's happening. Plastic starts out as pellets or sometimes shredded scrap material, just little chunks of plastic, each one separated and unorganized. These can be virgin plastics, recycled plastics, or a mix of both. I'm using colored clay here for clarity, but in reality, it's usually clear. They're dumped into a machine called an extruder and heated until they're melted down. Then a spinning screw pushes the mixture along, compressing it tighter and tighter and building up all sorts of pressure inside of the material. When it's done, it's just basically a giant melted batch of plastic like this. I borrowed a pasta roller from the missus to show you the final step. Sorry, honey. When I press the dough through this, it comes out perfectly smooth, perfectly even, uniform thickness every time. Even though I'm using clay and it's a slightly different formula and it doesn't stick together as well, you can see the randomness in this pile. But just like this dough, it's still soft on the inside. All that pressure leaves it under stress. The outside cools first and the inside is just a mess of stresses that are locked in. By looking at the swirls in this, you can see that there was all kinds of tension and pressure that went into this and you're getting basically a conglomeration at the end. And because extruded acrylic isn't really meant for shop use, there's no surface coating. It's made to be cheap, not tough. It comes out uniform, but it's soft and under pressure. That means it scratches easily from clamps, dust, even paper towels. If you've ever cursed at acrylic for being brittle or finicky to work with, there's a good chance it was extruded. Cast acrylic is a different beast. It's poured into molds and allowed to cool slowly, which gives it time to settle evenly. No pressure, no stretching, just a stable uniform structure from the start. Now, Obviously clay isn't a liquid, so I'm just simulating this by pressing it down gently with plywood to show that smooth melted finish. That's really all that happens with cast acrylic. It's poured into a mold, settles naturally, and cures into a dense, stable sheet. But that does come with a trade-off. Cast being poured, not pressed, means you don't always get the perfect uniform thickness like you do with extruded. And here's where that bites. Say you order two pieces of cast acrylic thinking you'd butt them together for a seamless joint. You might end up with a visible step between them just because of the slight thickness difference. But let's put stress and temperature aside. Another huge difference between this and extruded is that cast usually starts from virgin material. Pure, fresh liquid acrylic mixed and cured from scratch. That's a huge reason why it's so dense and consistent. If you work with steel, this might sound familiar. Extruded acrylic is like hot rolled steel. Made fast, cost effective, and great for general use. But cast is more like stress relief cold rolled. It takes longer to produce, but it's more refined internally and better suited for precision under pressure. It doesn't fight you when you cut, drill, or clamp it. Speaking of fighting you, let's test the two different types of acrylics and see how they hold up. I started by slicing a section off of each sample with a table saw. The blade is brand new. And right away under the microscope, the first thing that stood out wasn't even the cut, it was the color. You can see a slight difference here. Cast has a slight grayish tone, while extruded looks silvery. You'll also notice a thickness difference here. The cast sheet here is noticeably thicker compared to the nominally sized extruded acrylic. I'll use my caliper here, and it looks like the extruded is about 0 0.2005, and the cast comes out at 0.2385. Neither one of these is actually a quarter of an inch, but I'm definitely a lot closer with the cast. Both of these do look like they show some surface striations from the blade, but if we look at the edges, it looks like the extruded has a few nicks, while I can't really see much of anything on the cast. And no, it's not bad enough that the extruded wouldn't work for you, but keep in mind, I started with a fresh blade. Bandsaws are a little harsher than table saw blades when cutting plastic, so that's what we'll do now. This first one is a carbide tooth blade. Both cuts don't look good. You can see chip out on both. But what I found interesting was that the cast actually looked like denser plastic, while the extruded has what looks like bubbles on the inside. I know they can't be bubbles, so I'm not really sure what this is. 
I've found that rubbing a candlestick on the blade first actually helps give you a better cut, but we're not doing that here. I want these results to be as raw and fair as possible. This bandsaw uses a normal Olsen blade. The teeth are finer, so I expect the plastic to cut a little better. I feel like the cast actually was more dense and had finer striations than the extruded, so it may take a better cut. On the edges, it looks like the extruded has chip out, but not as much for the cast, and what was there was minimal. Cutting plastic is ugly at best, but the real problem with plastic is when you need to attach it to something. So we're headed to the drill press. We'll start off with twist bits. First, a 16th inch to see how small flutes handle the cut. Then a quarter inch, which is about average size. And we'll finish with a half inch bit, big enough to make things interesting. Now we'll use what I think is the worst bit for plastics, brad point bits. Not because they grab, but because of the spurs. Bits with brad point spurs usually start around an eighth of an inch. So we'll kick it off there. Then we'll step up to a three eighths of an inch, which is more of a typical hole size. And we'll finish with this monster three quarter inch bit, the one that I use for cutting dog holes in my bench. Next, we'll see how both plastic handles a single flute countersink bit. This one doesn't drill, it slices the surface clean to create a bevel, or at least it's supposed to. Oh, and I did allow the bits to cool between cuts. These things get hot. Forzner bits are tougher on plastics, not because of the cut, but because of the heat. They're wide, they're flat, and they generate friction fast. We'll start with a 5 8 inch bit to see how it handles, and finish with a one and a half inch bit, big enough to test the limits it's really easy to see that the cast cut so much more beautifully. The edges are cleaner and I don't see any distortions, whereas the extruded has some really messy edges, but I found bulges on the backside, especially the single flute uh, countersink bit where it wasn't able to cut all the way through. On the cast, it cut through the one and I don't even feel a bulge on the other side, but far better than the extruded. I spent maybe four minutes looking at both of these under the microscope, which is way too long for this video. But if you really want to geek out with me, you can catch that at the end as a clickable video. So far, we've shown that cosmetically, cast performs better. But jigs don't need to look pretty. They need to hold up under pressure. They need to take a bolt without splitting. If you look on here, you can see that I've marked one of the hex head points. I put a mark right here on the top. I've done the same thing with the extruded, and I want to see how far I can go before it actually breaks. I'll make sure that I'm lined up on that mark, and I'm just going to twist. And you can see there's a crack. It took me from this point here all the way over here. So let's see how the cast does. I'll make sure that I'm lined up and I'm just gonna twist. That's one. So that's two times. So now I've moved this point from here to this side, just like the other one. And you can see that there's no cracks. I'm gonna keep twisting this. At this point, I think I'm just going to give up and I'm going to look at the underside. I've spun it all the way around once. I'm going to see what it looks like. So instead of cracking the plastic, it actually started just pulling through. That is a huge difference. And you can see that this is actually split a little bit farther than the extruded. This shows that you have a better chance of pulling the screw through than actually cracking it. That's incredible. And that's the difference. If you want quality, if you want durability, stability, and something that won't fail on your jig, go with cast. You'll pay more, but you'll be glad you did later on. Remember, cast is less than double the cost of extruded, and it still costs less than remaking your jig after the first one cracks. Thank you, friends, for stopping by. A huge thank you to my patrons who help keep this work going. If you'd like to be a part of the team, or just throw a tip in the jar, there's a link down in the description. And remember, to keep making things.